Are you struggling with the six mark questions for GCSE Biology? Do you see those lines after lines are empty for you to fill in and be filled with this overwhelming sense of doom? Well, I'm gonna be sharing with you five tips that my students follow to get full marks and no longer dread these questions, but actually look forward to them because they know it's a good way to get full marks. Now you can expect two to three six markers in paper one and paper two. So if you are struggling with them, definitely stick around so I can share with you these five top tips so you will no longer fear them and instead you'll be banking lots of extra marks to get you that higher grade. Hey everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology. In this video I'm diving in to five top tips to get you full marks on those GCSE six marker questions. These five simple and easy strategies to implement will help you to get more marks without having to write more information. It's going to be about writing a smarter answer rather than more writing. Now before we jump into these five key tips, if you haven't already heard, I am running a GCSE Biology Easter Boot Camp. This boot camp is online and it involves four days of expert led with me interactive revision sessions covering exam skills, tricky topics and also real exam practice. It's running from the 14th to the 17th of April. It's one hour each morning. You can either attend just one session or book all four and if you do that you get one day for free. Plus if you are on the bursary or free school meals or people premium you can get 30% off. Just need to email me evidence that you receive that. There are limited spaces though so if you do want to attend make sure you sign up before it sells out and the link is in the description and hopefully I'll see you there so I can help you boost a whole range of exam skills to get you those top marks at GCSE Biology. Okay let's jump into the main content starting with first of all what are the six mark questions and as I say that I realize it might sound quite obvious well they're questions that are worth six marks but there's a little bit more to it than just that. These are actually known as extended response questions because six marks is extended in terms of what you're having to write and the point of them is to test your ability to explain GCSE concepts, apply your knowledge and also to use key scientific terminology. So why are these questions so important to be able to do well on? First of all you can expect to get two or three of them per paper which means you could get up to 18 marks on paper one and 18 marks on paper two on these long answer or extended response questions which is quite a big chunk of your overall mark. Number two they're important because they're marked differently to the rest of the paper. They are marked in what's called a level of response. What this means is it's not literally you've said this word and therefore tick you get that mark. Instead there are boxes where it describes this kind of answer might have two descriptions and one explanation. This answer might have three descriptions and two explanations and your answer then fits in into one of those boxes or levels of response. And that's how they determine, do you get zero to two marks, three to four marks? five to six marks. It's which box your answer best fits into. And then they have to determine whether you're at the top or the bottom of the box. So five or six marks if you're in the top box. So it's not ticks equal marks. It's your overall answer is judged as a whole, which box it best fits into. And then whereabouts in the box your answer lands. And number three, these are important because sometimes these can actually be easier than those really challenging maths questions, data analysis questions from graphs, or those obscure application questions questions because if you follow the five strategies we're going to go through and you've revised so you know all the theory you should be able to get six marks on these every single time. Let's jump into the good stuff then the five tips and number one is my most important one and that is bullet point your answers. So AQA allows you to bullet point your answers for every single question for GCSE biology so that means for these six markers you can just do bullet points rather than lengthy paragraphs. So why do I recommend you should always bullet point your answers, especially on these questions? Well, number one, for most people, it's much faster to do bullet points of your thought process rather than coming up with a whole paragraph. Number two, it helps you to stay much clearer and more concise in your answer, which is going to save you time and make sure you probably write a better answer overall, getting more key marking points. And number three, it makes it easier for the examiner to follow, so they're less likely to make mistakes when they mark 
mark your paper. And actually there's a number four. It makes it quicker for you to check your answers as well if you have the time to check through your answers at the end. So let me show you an example. Imagine this question here. Describe how the alveoli and villi are adapted for absorption. Now that has come up as a six mark question and it's just testing your knowledge. There's no hidden application or math. So if you had revised, then you simply need to bullet point the facts about the villi, the facts about the alveoli, and you've got your six marks. So let me show you an example. So here we can see three marks for the alveoli that you could bullet point. They've got a large surface area for diffusion, thin walls to reduce diffusion distance, and good blood supply to maintain concentration gradient. Then we can see on the other side, we've got the three marking points for the villi. Microvilli increase surface absorption. The villi have thin walls for efficient absorption, or you could say to reduce the diffusion distance and also they have many mitochondria to provide energy for active transport. Look how brief and concise that answer is and that is a six mark answer. That would have been really quick for you to write, really quick for you to check and really quick for the examiner to be able to see yep that's six marks they've got at least two detailed descriptions for both structures and that would be six marks. Right tip number two is to underline the scientific terms in your bullet pointed answer. In the mark scheme, although it is a level of response mark scheme, there's always an accompanying bullet point list where it says, here's some key concepts or key terms to look for in the student's answer. So if you are doing your bullet points and you then underline what you think are the key words, or key marking points, then first of all, you are checking, have you definitely got a key word in every bullet point? And secondly, it makes it easier again for the examiner to check, yes, they've got the right bullet points and they've got the key terms in there. And it makes it easier for you to check as well. Now, underlining and checking that you've got these key terms in your answer is really important because if you are missing them, you might drop to band two, which means you're capped at four marks out of six. So here's the strategy to approach when doing this. Number one, identify what the keywords are in the question. Number two, then think about how you can include mark scheme specific language in your bullet point answer and then highlight that. And if you're thinking, I have no idea what the mark scheme specific points are because I'm the student, not the examiner, then make sure you watch all of my entire topic videos because I highlight them on every slide. And not only that, my GCSE notes also indicate the key marking points for every single topic. Examiner's tips and key summaries and key questions as as well, which I've got linked in the description below if you want to get your hands on a copy. And then step number three for this approach is once you've seen the keywords in the question, considered from your memory the key marking points, find them in your bullet points and underline them. So let me show you another example. And if you want to have a go at this question, pause it before I go through the answer. So the question is explain the effect of a blocked coronary artery for six marks. So here are four key bullet points that you could have written that would have got you six marks. Because remember for these questions, Ticks don't equal marks, it's the overall quality of your answer. Mark number one, reduced blood flow to the heart, underlining blood flow. Number two, less oxygen and glucose available, underlining oxygen and glucose because they are needed for respiration. Number three, less aerobic respiration and more anaerobic respiration because it's the oxygen needed for aerobic respiration. So underline the aerobic and underline the anaerobic respiration as well. Number four, you're going to have increased lactic acid because you're responsible inspiring more anaerobically, which produces lactic acid. And this results in muscle fatigue and chest pain. So for that sentence, I'd be underlining lactic acid, muscle fatigue, and chest pain. Tip number three is read the question properly and focus on the command word. One of the biggest mistakes that students make on these questions is not reading the question properly because often these questions contain two command words. So what I mean by a command word is whether they tell you to describe, explain, state, evaluate. Those are command words because it's commanding or telling you what type of answer you need to give. And sometimes these six markers say describe and explain. So the three most common ones that you see in these six mark questions are describe, explain, and evaluate. So if you weren't sure what those mean, I'm gonna pop them up on screen now for you to see. Describe means give features without saying why, which is the explanation. Explain means give reasons 
why or how something happens. And evaluate means give both sides of an argument or a situation and make a judgment, which is your conclusion. So to make sure you are reading the question properly, I always recommend to highlight or underline the command word or words in the question so you don't miss a particular part of the question. Because if it does say describe and explain and you've only described features and not said why they do whatever they do, whatever the question is, you won't get over four marks. Strategy four is becoming familiar with these level of response mark schemes. So here's a generic example showing you the level one, two and three how many marks that would be worth and overall what is required to fit into that level. So level one, one to two marks would be basic points and no linking. Three to four, there might be some explanations, but not fully clear. Five to six, there's logical links and really detailed, clear scientific explanations. So what that tells us is to get the full marks, which is level three, you need to use correct scientific key terms. So you need to know these key mark scheme points, which as I said, you can use my YouTube videos or my GCSE notes to help you with that. Make sure if you're asked to explain something, you're explaining links between maybe cause and effect or structure and function, whatever the question is. And if it's evaluate, you have to cover both sides, pros and cons or arguments for and against. So let me show you an example of a level one, two and three response. So this makes a bit more sense. And I'm going to use the same previous question, which was explain how blocked coronary arteries affect the body. So here would be a level one response. Less blood gets to the heart, so it doesn't work as well. That just contains basic points, not really explaining anything and there's no linking. Level two, less oxygen reaches heart cells so they can't respire properly. We've got a bit more detail here because they have pointed out less oxygen, but then they say respires properly. They aren't giving scientific key terms saying instead of aerobic, there's anaerobic. And then level three to get into the full marks band, reduced oxygen and glucose means less aerobic respiration, forcing the heart to use anaerobic respiration, leading to lactic acid buildup, chest pain and fatigue. So that's clearly fully explained with lots of scientific terms included to get those five to six marks. And number five, this is equally as important as number one. One and five, the two most important. Bullet point your answer and number five is lots of practice of these six marker questions, implementing steps one to four. That is the best way to improve practice. Now, if you do want to practice these, I've got a bunch of the six marker questions for free on my website missestrick.co.uk you can get the link down below so you can practice lots of them so that's it the five key strategies number one bullet point your answer number two underline the key terms number three read the question and look for the command words carefully number four think about those levels of response and number five practice now link to that idea of practice yes i've got that free booklet but don't forget i've also got the gcse biology easter boot camp running from the 14th to 17th of april where we're focusing on a range of skills one of them is these six markers where we will practice lots of these questions together so come and join me using the link in the description that's it for today's video i hope you found it helpful and i'll see you in another video very soon